Hi, my name is Lin Lu. Welcome to the talk of our Azure Crypt 2021 paper, Digital Signatures with Memory Tight Security in the Multi-Challenge Setting. This is joint work with Dennis Diemert, Kai Gallat, and Tibor Jager. We are from the University of Wuppertal. In this talk, I will first provide some background knowledge about memory tight reductions and digital signatures. I will also talk about security of digital signatures in the multi-challenge setting. Then I will recall some impossibility results in getting memory tight digital signatures in this setting. In the second part of this talk, I will talk about how we curve these impossibility results. And our approach can be divided into two steps. In the first step, we achieve a weak memory tight security in the multi-challenge setting, which we call the MSUFCMA1 security, by the help of a special kind of reductions, which we call the canonical reductions. And in the second step, we propose a generic and memory tight transformation from the MSUFCMA1 security to the MSUFCMA security. And next, I will talk about the instantiations of our approach and compare them with existing schemes. Finally, I summarize our work and raise some interesting open problems. First, let's talk about security reductions. When we build some cryptographic scheme and want to prove certain security of this scheme based on some assumption, what we usually do is to build a reduction R which transfers any adversary breaking the security of this scheme into a problem solver. In this work, we are interested in non-interactive problems, which can be a computational problem like CDH or RSA, or it can be a decision problem like DDH. The reduction gets an instance pi of this problem and simulates the initial input of the adversary. When the adversary makes some Oracle queries to the reduction, the reduction R will simulate and re, uh, the oracle and the responses for the adversary. Finally, the adversary outputs something and the reduction will use this output together with its view to extract some solution S to the problem pi and output the solution S. We usually measure the quality of a reduction while its running time and its success probability or advantage. We say a reduction R is tight if the overall running time of the reduction is, appro is approximately the same with the running time of the, of the adversary, and the success probability or the advantage of the reduction is approximately the same uh, with the success probability or the advantage of the adversary. It is very often that the reductions are not tight. For example, we often see reductions such that the running time is tight, but the advantage reduces by a factor of L. This factor L is called the security loss of the reduction R, and it is not tight if L depends on the adversary. For example, L equals to the number of queries made by the adversary. Elbach, Cash, Fersh, and Kills notice that actually memory is also a valuable computational resource and should be considered as a measurement for reductions. They propose the concept of memory tight reductions, and a reduction is memory tight if the overall memory consumed by the reduction is approximately the same with the memory consumed by the adversary. This means that the additional memory consumed by the re reduction itself is little compared with the memory consumed by the adversary and is independent of the adversary. Providing memory tight reductions for, crypto for cryptographic schemes is of great importance, especially when the underlying problem is a memory sensitive one. In this talk, uh, we will call a reduction fully tight if it, is, if it is tight in terms of time, advantage, and memory. Next, let, let us briefly recall the public key primitive of digital signatures. A digital signature scheme allows a secret key holder to authenticate any message uh, by generating a signature for this message using the secret key. Anyone who has the corresponding public key can publicly verify the validity of the signature for this message using the public key. And for security of digital signatures, the most common, commonly accepted uh, security is the existential affordability and their chosen message attacks security or UFCMA security. In the UFCMA security game, an adversary gets a public key as initial input, 
and can have multiple access to a sign oracle. In each query to this sign oracle, the adversary adaptively selects a message MI and gets a signature sigma I for MI. In the end of the game, the adversary makes a false query by submitting a message signature pair m star sigma star to the challenger. An EUF CMA adversary wins if the final forgery is valid, uh, which means that the signature sigma star is a valid signature with respect to message m star, and the message m star is never has never been uh, signed before. We are also interested in a stronger version in this of this security, which we, uh, which is called the strong UF CMA security. And in the S UF CMA game, we relax the winning condition for the adversary and allow the adversary to win even if the message M star has been signed before, as long as the signature sigma star is new. And putting this in some other way, this means that uh, the final signi message signature pair is not one of the message signature pairs that has been queried and answered by the sign or oracle. Both of these uh, two sec uh, securities consider single challenge adversaries where the adversary can only make one last uh, forge query at, at the end of the game. Uh, however, for memory tightness, we are particularly interested in multi-challenge security. Albach et al. Uh, formalized a multi-challenge UF CMA security, which we call the MUF CMA security. Uh, in this MUF CMA security game, an adversary gets multiple chances to make forge queries at any time. Uh, the adversary wins if there exists at least one valid forge queries. Uh, one valid forge query among them. Here, uh, we also consider a strong uh, and non-strong versions and call the strong version as MSUFCMA security. If we do not consider memory, then single challenge UFCMA security tightly implies the multi-challenge UFCMA security. The reduction can simply use memory to store all the message signature pairs for the multi-challenge uh, multi adversary and test whether a forgery pair is fresh or not, and outputs the first uh, fresh pair as its own uh, forgery. However, we cannot assume that all the single challenge adversary will use memory to store the message signature pairs, and a tight reduction is not obvious if memory is taken into consideration in this multi-challenge setting. Previous works have even shown some impossibility results for digital signatures in terms of uh, memory tight uh, multi challenge security. More precisely, Elbach et al. show that cert for certain black box reductions from the multi challenge security to the single challenge security, it must be non tight with respect to uh, memory or time. They provide a memory tight reduction for the RSA full domain hash signature scheme, but it is not tight in terms of advantage or time. Wang et al. generalizes their results and show that uh, a certain natural black box reductions from the uh, multi-challenge security to any computational problem must be non-tight with respect to memory or time. They also show some uh, lower bounds for the security in the multi-user setting and clearly resist hashing setting. Uh, it seems that we only have some bad news for memory tight signatures in the multi-challenge setting and in our work, we propose an approach to equivalent these lower bounds. Uh, instead of focusing on the properties of reductions that would make the impossibility results hold, we focus on finding which properties of the reduction R are sufficient to achieve memory tightness in the multi-challenge setting. Uh, however, we need to keep in mind the lower bounds proposed by Alba et al. and Wang et al. about black box reductions in the multi-challenge setting. So what we consider is non-black box reductions. And furthermore, we consider a weaker security notion in the multi-challenge setting. However, even in this uh, weaker setting, we still face the main challenge that the reduction R must be able to distinguish fresh forgery from replayed message signature pair without using memory. Our first step about solving this problem is that uh, we consider a weaker security notion, which is the one signature per message security, or the CMA1 security. The CMA1 security game differs from the classical CMA security in the sense that if the adversary queries the sign oracle 
For the same message multiple times, the CMA1 game will only generate a fresh signature for the first query and the adversary will uh, receive the signature as response uh, of all the other queries for the same message. Uh, that means uh, for each message, the adversary only gets uh, one freshly generated signature. And note that usually we still need uh, memory to store message signature pairs in order to reply the same signature to the adversary when the same message is queried. However, we observe that if there exists a reduction R for the CME1 security such that R simulates the signature in some deterministic way, then intuitively R can deal with all the sign queries and forge queries without storing any of the message signature pair. The reason is that R could run the signature simulation algorithm each time it receives a sign query. Since this algorithm functions in some deterministic way, uh, the, same, the same signature will be generated for the same message. For the forge query, the reduction R could determine whether the message signature pair M star sigma star is fresh or not by first simulating the signature for sigma star uh, for, for M star and then compare sigma star with the simulated signature. If m star sigma star is a replay, then it must be the case that sigma star equals to the simulated signature. And alternatively, if sigma star does not equal to the simulated signature, then m star sigma star must be a fresh pair. And in this way, R could deal with all sign queries and forge queries without storing the message signature pairs. And we formalize this intuition as canonical reductions. We say a reduction R is L delta canonical if it transfers any strong UFCMA1 adversary A into a problem solver for some interactive problem. And reduction R functions uh, uh, as shown in this figure. A canonical reduction R takes uh, a problem instance pi as input and will use the algorithm Rgen to simulate a public key and secret key. The simulated public key will be provided to the adversary A and the simulated secret key will be used to simulate signatures. The adversary can, sign, uh, can make sign queries and uh, the canonical reduction R will use algorithm R sign to simulate signatures. Uh, if random oracle model is considered, the adversary can make random oracle queries and the canonical re reduction R will use the algorithm R hash to simulate uh, the random oracle. At the end of the game, the single challenge adversary makes its forge query. The canonical reduction R will use a check alg algorithm to check the message signature pair. And the check alg algorithm outputs one if and only if sigma star is a valid signature for M star and the sigma star does not equal to the simulated signature for M star. If the check pass, uh, an algorithm R extract will be run to extract the solution S. Otherwise, uh, if the check fail, uh, the, an algorithm U will be run to generate a, a trivial solution S. And finally, uh, R will output uh, the solution S and terminates. We note that for canonical reductions, the algorithm R sign, R hash, R extract, and check are all deterministic algorithms, uh, but they have access to the same random function. Finally, we require that the canonical reduction works, which means that the advantage of R is larger than or equal to the advantage of A divided by L minus delta. And this is the definition for canonical reductions. And note that canonical reductions are restricted in several aspects. First, it only deals with single challenge adversaries. And more precisely, it only deals with SUFCMA1 adversaries. Secondly, uh, even though canonical reductions do not store message signature pairs, uh, they are not necessarily memory tight because R will also need to simulate the random function that, that is accessed by the algorithms and this, make, uh, th this takes a lot of memory. And thirdly, canonical reductions works for the CMA1 security, uh, uh, works for the CMA1 adversary, but not for the standard CMA adversary. Uh, even though canonical reductions are restricted in these aspects, it still serves as an important tool in our approach. 
With its help, we can prove an important theorem, which is the main theorem of our work. And the theorem states that if sigma is a signature scheme, pi is a non-interactive problem, and r is an L delta canonical reduction from breaking the SUFCMA1 security of sigma to solving the problem pi, then using the canonical reduction r and a memory tight secure a pseudo-random function, we can build another reduction r prime from breaking the multi-challenge MSUF CMA1 security of sigma to solving the problem pi, such that for any adversary A prime, the overall running time and memory of R prime is approximately the same with the running time and memory of A prime, and the advantage of R prime is approximately the advantage of A prime divided by L minus delta. The proof idea of this theorem is that we construct R prime using the algorithms of the canonical reduction R and instantiate the random function using the pseudo-random function. When the reduction R prime runs the check algorithm for, er for every forge query made by the multi-challenge adversary A prime and only use the first forge query which can pass the check to extract solutions. Note that now our prime is tight in terms of time and memory. If the parameters are good for the canon canonical reduction R, which means that L is a constant and delta is either statistically small or negligibly small but is independent of the adversary, then the reduction R prime will also be tight in terms of advantage, which means our, our prime is fully tight uh, for the MSUS UFCME 1 security of sigma. And this is a nice result. We get fully tight results, but we still need to seek a way to upgrade the security from CMA1 security to the standard CMA security. And here comes our second step. We propose a generic transformation which achieves this goal and preserves tightness for all three dimensions. Suppose sigma prime is a signature scheme, we transfer sigma prime to another signature scheme sigma by involving an additional uh, random nonce n in the signature. Uh, the nonce n is chosen uniformly random from bit strings of length 2 lambda and then signed together with the message. We can prove the theorem that if sigma prime is memory tightly MSUFCMA1 secure, then sigma is memory tightly MSUFCMA1 secure. Uh, and actually, we can prove more than what we show here. Uh, this transformation is not only preserves memory tightness, but also preserves tightness in terms of time and advantage. The proof idea of the theorem is that we can simulate the CMA game based on a CMA1 game. The CMA adversary will query the same message multiple times in the CMA game. However, the nonces are chosen uniformly and independently, which means that they are unlikely to repeat. So the message together with the nonce will also not repeat. And this completes our approach, and let me summarize it here. Uh, we first assume that for signature scheme sigma prime, there is an L delta canonical reduction R, which proves that uh, th sigma prime is SUFCMA1 secure uh, when the non-interactive problem pi is hard. Then in the first step, we construct a memory tight reduction R prime using R, and R prime proves that uh, sigma prime has memory tight MSUFCMA1 security under the same assumption. Now we successfully go from single challenge setting uh, to the multi challenge setting, but we are still in the CMA1 case. Then we apply our second step to transfer sigma prime to sigma with the help of nonces. And uh, sigma has memory tight MSUF CMA security. Furthermore, if L is a constant, delta is small and independent of the adversary then sigma is a fully tight uh, uh, signature scheme in all the three dimensions. Um, to instantiate our approach, we only need to construct a, a signature scheme sigma prime and provide a canonical reduction proving the single challenge as UFCMA1 security of this scheme. We are able to do this for three different schemes. The first scheme is based on a lossy identification scheme by Abdel Abdelato 
We show a one delta canonical reduction for their lossy ID based on signature scheme. Uh, the underlying non-interactive problem or the assumption is that the loss, lossy public key is, 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 is indistinguishable from normal public key um, for the lossy ID schemes. And the delta here is statistically small. So by our generic uh, approach, we can get a fully tied MS UFCMA secure digital signature scheme. And the second scheme is the RSA Fudu Mahash scheme proposed by Blair and Rockway. Albach et al. they proposed a reduction for the RSA Fudu Mahash scheme, and this reduction can be viewed as a E times QS, zero canonical reduction where E is the oldest number, and QS is the number of signed queries made by the adversary. And if we apply directly our approach on this reduction, we will not get a fully tight scheme because the security loss here is large. However, Kasa and Wang propose a slight variant of RSA Fudu Mehash scheme, which, which we call the RSA FDH plus scheme. And we can provide a 2-0 canonical reduction to the uh, uh, RSA problem for the RSA FDH plus scheme. And plugging this reduction into our approach, we can get the second fully tight MS UFCMA secure digital signature scheme. And also we get a similar results for the Bonin Ling Shahman scheme or the BLS scheme. And this table shows a comparison between these schemes. And you can see that we get three fully tight MS UFCMA secure digital signatures. And the cost to achieve a fully tightness is a two lambda bits in expansion in the signature size because the additional nouns that we use in the second step has length to lambda. And here I want to bring attention to an independent and a concurrent work hiding in plain sight memory tight proofs via randomness, randomness programming by Gosho. Goso, Jaeger, and Tessero. And they studied the problem of getting uh, memory tight MUF CMA secure signature schemes about, uh, via black box reductions. Their construction is similar to ours. In the second step, they also use uh, random nonsense, uh, but uh, their approach is completely different from ours. And we want to send our acknowledgments to the four authors of this paper for spotting a gap in the proof of our main theorem. We close this gap in the full version of our paper by introducing a new property for canonical reductions and with a refined analysis. We also want to send our acknowledgments to the anonymous reviewers of Asia Crypt 2021 for insightful and helpful comments. And finally, let, let me summarize our work. We propose a generic approach in getting memory tight MS UFCMA security uh, uh, digital signatures. And we instantiate our approach and get three digital signatures with a fully tight MS UFCMA security. And our results do not conflict with the impossibility results by Alpaha at all or Wang at all. We can cook with this impossibility results because we focus on a special kind of non-black box reductions, which we call the canonical reductions. A limitation of our work is that all the memory tight signature scheme we considered, regardless of fully tight or not, are proven in the random oracle model. So we think getting a memory tight multi-challenge secure uh, digital signature scheme in the standard model is an interesting open problem. If you are interested in our paper, you can find the full version of this paper on ePrint via the link shown here. You can find the slides on the Azure Group 2021 website. And if you have any questions about our work, feel free to send us emails, or you can raise your question in the interactive session of Azure Group 2021 conference, and we will try our best to answer them. And uh, that's all for this talk. Thank you very much for your time and attention.